once common throughout Africa and Asia. Elephant numbers were severely depleted during the 20th century, largely due to the massive ivory trade. While some populations are now stable and growing, poaching, conflict and habitat destruction continue to threaten the species. Five years ago, researchers in Africa undertook a mammoth task, that is, counting the continent elephant. The Great Elephant Census spanned 18 countries and 295,000 miles, making it the largest, most comprehensive survey of African elephant ever. But the results released in 2016 were sobering. Just 352,271 savannah elephants were found across their current range, a 30% drop in seven years. In 2016, the International Union for Conservation of Nature reported that Africa's elephant population had seen its worst decline in 25 years, mostly as a result of intensified poaching for ivory. In East Africa, elephant populations have nearly halved in a decade, but Swana is currently home to more elephants than any other African country, and Southern Africa remains a stronghold for 223,000 or 70% of the estimated remaining African elephants. The Elephant Protection Initiative's first consultative group meeting was one of the highlights of the Illegal Wildlife Trade Conference held in London on the 11th and 12th of October 2018. The, if the international community is unable... President Ali Bongo Ondimba of Gabon opened the meeting with an appeal for international support for African countries as they attempt to implement their national elephant action plans. Let no one doubt the determination of the EPI to deliver its goals. The EPI states have invested our own blood and treasure to protect elephants from poachers. The EPI member states are determined to halt the elephant slaughter and to fight the wider threats to our, to our biodiversity. But we are fighting the battle on behalf for all mankind. It is the rest of the, is the, rest of the world prepared to help us. If the international community is unable or unwilling to identify the finances required to implement these plans despite our country's national budget contributions, which total tens of millions of dollars, the NEAP are just pieces of paper. Let's fight illegal trade at all levels. And let us One after the other, leaders of the Elephant Protection Initiative member states talked about their goals and how they hope to achieve them. A serious problem as communities in some parts of Botswana who have not had contact with elephants in their areas in the past are increasingly having to deal with them, which damage their crops, their water points, their fences, and other such. In response, government instituted a number of measures to reduce the damage by building electric fences and the use of other deterrents. Compensation to farmers for the destruction of property by elephants has also been increased, though woefully inadequate and lagging behind. If we are to become successful in addressing the damage by elephants on people through destruction of crops and infrastructure, and indeed through loss of life in some cases, we must involve those communities who live with elephants and provide economic benefits and revenue for them, which go well beyond compensation payments. In a special address, the Duke of Cambridge said that he believed the Elephant Protection Initiative offers the best African-owned approach to protecting African elephants. They are your plans. They are African-owned plans, which are determined by your national priorities and individual circumstances. They are underpinned by a common principle that ivory will not be sold commercially. But crucially, they give each government ownership and control over how to manage their own elephant populations in their own way. The EPI represents hope. Hope that our children and future generations will have the opportunity to observe elephants in the wild, coexisting with local communities who have a vested interest in protecting them and their habitats. 
The Elephant Protection Initiative was launched in 2014 by the leaders of Gabon, Chad, Tanzania, Botswana and Ethiopia. Now it has 19 member countries. These members have common policies to save Africa's elephant and build sustainable future for their citizens. Nigeria joined the Elephant Protection Initiative in October 2018. It is our responsibility to protect these species that are endangered. And not only the elephant, all the wildlife and flora. It's important for us to do that. Nigeria is committed. We will continue to partner with uh, other African countries and the world at large to ensure that the uh, intention of the Elephant Protection Initiative is protected and carried to the highest level. Although elephants live in wildlife refuges and other protected areas, the extensive migrations mean as much as 80% of their range exists in unprotected areas. Political instability and social economic challenges prevent many governments from maintaining conservation parks and institutions. Non-governmental institutions work with affected human populations to develop plans that move crops away from the fringes of elephant habitats. La lutte contre les, les éléphants demande beaucoup de moyens, beaucoup de moyens. I believe that this fight against poaching needs more financial and human resources. Don't forget, Congo has an estimate of 23 million hectares of forest, so it's not easy to survey the entire space. We need access to new technologies to see the poaching going on in inner parts as well as the borders. We need environmental guards to be on the ground and guard against poaching. The global landscape for ivory trade has shifted dramatically following increased international attention to the decimation of many African elephant populations. Traditionally, the modus operandi most favored by ivory traffickers was to smuggle whole or pieces of elephant tusks from Africa to Asia, where they would be processed and worked locally. But recent investigations have uncovered the alarming trend of ivory being semi or partially worked, cut and processed on the African continent before being smuggled to end markets. This development poses clear enforcement challenges given that smaller pieces of ivory are more difficult to intercept, detect and identify. In the continent, in, in, in a country, people can manage their land in a way that taking into account the conservation. But they need to cooperate it, like in terms of uh, watching or monitoring the trade, the movement of ivory across their borders. And given that EPI is focused on this, putting countries together to talk, to set up strategy, to manage the movement of ivory, the illegal ivory, illegal market across borders. That is, I think, very st strength, very, very, very powerful. It has been found that criminal syndicates of these Asian origin have set up shop in African countries. In a reaction to increased legislative national and international focus on illicit ivory trade, and now, international law enforcement and customs agencies are being alerted to this new development and it is essential that they are given the necessary tools to effectively counter it. Experts say more research and understanding of African elephant movement and behavior is needed to develop effective conservation strategies. In 1986, the African Elephant Specialist Group established the African Elephant Database to collect field data and provide information about elephant populations and distribution that is as comprehensive and detailed as possible. Modern technology, including GPS and satellite tracking, are now being used to monitor elephant movement. This, it is said, is particularly important now since elephants move without regard to national political boundaries. That's our program for the day. Thank you for watching. Our inbox, sfile at channelstv.com, is available for your comments and questions. You can also view this episode and other episodes of the program by viewing our YouTube channel, 
youtube.com slash channelswap. You click the playlist menu and then click S file. From me, Ayola Kasim, and the FR crew here in Lagos. It's bye for now. Mm -hmm.